the auroras. They've fascinated people near the poles for thousands of years. Imagine what our ancestors thought when they saw these lights. How do you explain this phenomenon? Into the 20th century, cultures from China to Europe to the Americas all had myths to explain the auroras, linking them to gods or ghosts or spirits. But possibly more fascinating than imagined stories is to understand what's actually going on. The process starts deep inside the sun, where nuclear reactions release energy outward, creating rounded magnetic fields. Sometimes a magnetic field will push its way to the surface, and then electrically charged gases or plasmas will push the magnetic field farther out. Like a rubber band, the magnetic field stretches and twists, and then it breaks ejecting several billion tons of plasma into space. This is a solar storm, and it can reach Earth in 18 hours, but we're protected by our own magnetic field, the magnetosphere. You see, the Earth has a molten iron core that rotates quickly, turning it into a giant magnet with north and south poles. The magnetosphere deflects most of the sun particles, but some get through to our atmosphere near the poles. The magnetic fields couple together and that creates a funnel where plasma streams down the daylight side of the poles. This is the daylight aurora. Then the magnetic fields stretch farther back and couple together again. The magnetic rubber band breaks and plasma streams along the magnetic lines toward the poles on the night side. This is the nighttime aurora. As these electrically charged particles strike the atmosphere, they excite oxygen and nitrogen atoms causing them to light up into the brilliant colors of the aurora. As videos from the last year alone have shown us, the auroras can also be seen from space, and they've recently been spotted on Jupiter and Saturn as well, displaying new revelations of beauty of our world around us that we couldn't have known existed just 100 years ago. For your weekly dose of woe, I'm Jordan Sandler.